Hey guys, my name is That Quiet Kid, and today we are going to do a room called Atlas on Try Hack Me, which is made by Merlin Oreca. Is the creator of this room. So let's dive right into it. So first thing you have to do is just press Start Machine here, and you have to download your VPN file as well to connect to Try Hack Me. And you can download it by going to this Access option, and then it will. Uh, then you have to download this configuration file from here you can choose any server I'm using Europe regular one after downloading your file you have to type open VPN and the name of your file VPN file and press enter And after uh, you have connected to the VPN, it will show here initialization sequence completed and you can confirm that you are connected to the VPN by typing this con command if config and it will show a turn zero interface with the IP address 10.8.130.2. So let's start uh, doing the task of this machine uh, of this room. Uh, Atlas hack hack the Atlas server in this beginner room converting covering Windows attack methodology. So welcome to Atlas. This is an introductory level room which aims to teach you the very basics of Windows system exploitation from initial access through to privilege escalation. Privilege escalation is actually uh, whenever you hack a machine or you are into a machine, you know when you are inside a machine. First, you are not uh, a root user, you are a simple user, then you have to escalate your privilege to a root user. So we, uh, in the, this room, uh, we'll explain everything from initial access. This room aims at teaching us the basics of Windows system exploitation from initial access, from getting the initial foothold into the machine to privilege escalation. We don't need any prior experience before attempting this room however we have basic Linux used on so let's press the green start machine button to deploy the machine we have already did it so just answer it was next is port scanning okay so I think port scanning we will use nmap to know how many ports are open you can uh, copy this IP address from here and let's start our nmap scan Now it is showing us uh, options. Uh, we can use list of switches. We can use with nmap dash vv means set verbosity level to two, which means verbosity means how uh, the nmap scan will show us results as soon as it finds it. It won't it won't wait it won't wait before completing the whole scan to show you the results. It will show you as it finds. Okay, the host seems down. So I think maybe there is a firewall that is preventing us. Okay, see, they have also explained about dash pn switch, and this helps us. Uh, uh, this actually tells and map to check whether the machine is active, uh, check whether the machine is active or not. It it's not asking about the machine that it is active or not. It's just saying just scan it. He uh, dash pn uh, switch means it doesn't care that the machine is active or not just scan the machine and dash small b means ports we can specify ports to scan so let's type this switch dash pn it will take a few minutes i guess okay start your uh, target ip with nmap we have already scanned our target your target ip with nmap Note you will need the dash pn switch as I told earlier, which they have explained that why we should use dash pn switch here. A complete com command can be found in the hint, but we have already, I guess, ran our nmap scan. Okay, it has discovered two ports. First one is HTTP proxy, and I think it's a web server, port 8080, and the second one is MSWT server. I think it's it's kind of an RDB port means remote desktop client 
which means we can uh, you can whenever you hack a machine you can after you know the credentials you can log in through the terminal but if you don't like this interface and you want to you know uh, uh, view this machine via uh, like windows style then you uh, then you use rdp remote desktop client okay with the nmap default port range you should find two ports open we have found two ports open what ports are these these were these were 3389 and 8080 what service does nmap think is running on the higher of the two ports i think it's and port 80 it is http proxy i think it's an http uh, website let's visit this i think this was the ip and port okay it has authentication this site says thin vnc okay it is requesting for this username and password okay let's google thin vnc default credentials okay it's an http proxy okay you we would usually go on to do a lot more in-depth scanning but we will leave it at that for this introductory room we have what we need for the time being it says that uh, we can go in depth scanning of these ports but this is out of scope for this introductory room and let's see service enumeration enumeration so we have discovered two ports so let's scan this ports first let's scan this mswt server minus p for specifying the port and dash pn to scan to a actually kind of you know uh, uh, scan the machine and and kind of bypass the firewall I think then the IP is 10.10.14.151 so okay so let's try this I have specified the port I have oh service version and, the, and it has also specified the SV switch which means detect the version service version detection okay okay the first service we found was on port 3389 this is traditionally Microsoft's remote desktop protocol which I already told you that when I saw the port 3389 open I first thing that I thought was maybe it's a remote desktop client which means it's kind of a graphical remote desktop as I, as I was telling you that it, can, it will give you the windows type feel and not the terminal feel if you are you know not into terminal that much you can uh, view the files of the machine via remote desktop client if you have credential, credentials to a machine here the Microsoft terminal service tells us this is indeed RDP so it is remote desktop protocol so that's why this I, but we also found a port 8080 which had a site open okay so what can we do it is saying curl is a command line tool yes I know it is a command line tool which tells which lets us make requests over various protocols okay we can make a request using curl let's do that curl and the ip dot 14 dot 151 it was port 8080 dash let's see it's switches let's see dash dash help okay dash d for data dash d for logos
okay so it is trying to connect to verbose means verbosity means how much do you want uh, data verbosity actually means you know uh, as you do, as you are doing that scan or anything you have to show us the results as well before completing it connecting it's connected to this website and then it is sending a get request then the uh, it is specifying the host which is this IP and this port user agent is curl which we are using because we are sending a request and the response is access denied which means we don't have the access to this uh, you can say a website which we already saw when we try to access that uh, port I guess it was 10.10.14.151 10 port 8080 and it was asking us for credentials okay so what can you do now access denied access denied this thin VNC let's see what we have we already searched this thin vnc okay it has i guess a vulnerability this thin, thin vnc client authentication bypass okay it is saying that we can also use search exploit so let's see search exploit is a kali linux tool which helps us in finding the you know uh uh, exploits available for a service so the service was thin vnc let's see if there is an okay it also has an exploit available but we will do it manually first and then we will do through this exploit okay so let's copy this exploit to our machine uh, to my directory first i guess minus m is this switch and then specifying the name of the exploit I think it's 47519.py okay it has copied it to my directory it is right here so first we will do this manually and then we will do this through that exploit okay what do we have to do okay I think it, it can be bypassed using the following vector sample request or get request is sent and it is showing us some files as well okay so the bypass is right here you have to make a burp suite get request and then we have uh, direct it's kind of a directory traversal traversal attack i guess directory traversal ha huh. it is this is directory traversal attack because we are specifying some directories before this request and then we are getting the admin credentials i guess username and password so Let's start our burp suite first. Okay, then I'm using Foxy proxy and it has already, you know, my proxy set for burp suite. I can show you what are my settings for this Foxy proxy. Let me start burp first. okay this is the setting let's put proxy intercept is on okay now i was just as showing you that proxy i have set for burp suite it is burp suite proxy type http proxy ip address is your local host that is 127.0.0.1 the port for burp suite i'm using is 8080 and just this so i have started my burp suite proxy and let's send this request to burp suite okay it has sent this request to burp suite and i will send this to repeater which is a simple device through which you can uh, you know see the response given by the server and you can modify requests and it, okay so the exploit was admin slash directory traversal attack slash uh, let me see again what was it admin slash thin vnc dot ini okay we don't need this exploit anymore uh, this article anymore vnc dot ini okay let's send this request let's see if it 
have we bypassed yes we have and the username and password is I guess let's copy this username and password copy okay so let's add this credentials to a file first creds.txt and type in username and password okay so now I think we can access uh, this let's turn off burp suite I think we don't need this anymore yeah let's turn off this proxy as well go right back atlas and the password was hold up the heavens okay okay it is it is asking us to specify the machine so the machine IP was 14.151 this is what I'm talking about this thin VNC is actually it's it's also like I guess a remote desktop client because you can see that this is is like this is like remote desktop client we can access the website through uh, the machine through this website but it's actually not nice we will go through RDP into the machine okay we have search ex so exploit use search exploit to find this vulnerability in this fancy we already did this so let's go to okay okay attack for attack we can git clone also the exploit has been made by the uh, Merlin Oracle which is the creator of this room he has also created a github repository for this exploit so let's try to exploit it now the intended way see if you can figure out how to do this in your terminal by yourself otherwise the command is given in the okay we have to get clone this there was also an exploit available, but let's try this through it is keep it up a repository as it is an intended route to this machine okay it is cloning why it is taking so much time i have no idea why dash dash help okay it is cloned it so let's go into the directory dot slash cv dash dash help and see how we can use this usage is uh, host host is 10.10.14.151 and port was 8080 usage okay it is in python exploit so let's run it using python i guess syntax uh, python 3 i guess okay so uh, simply we have to type ip and port i think Okay, so we did this through the intended way by using the GitHub repository of Merlin Oracle. I hope you are, I am pronouncing your name right. Uh, and this is the credentials that is found by this exploit as well. Username as we already know and the password we know through manually doing through burp. Okay. So it is saying you have to chmod plus x this exploit which means make it executable chmod is means changing the permissions of a file but it was already executable as you can see that let me show you uh, this is as you can see that at the uh, left side you can see there are some 
things written which is read write executable rwx which means it is read write executable by a root read and executable by a user and uh, read and executable by all the other users of these machines by everyone last one means it is also read and executable by everyone so it was already executable so there was no point in making that executable it was already so we have did this it requires two argument we have did this uh, use the credentials found by you should have a user desktop we had a user desktop as you can see this we have but it was not nice actually the interface and it's it's kind of how can I say my cursor is not actually working in this so it's actually not nice so we will log in through RDP uh, read through the exploit code and try to perform this manually using curl or burp suite we already did, the, uh, did this exploit manually using burp suite so we don't need to do this with because the first time we did this exploit was using burp suite and it is just saying the same now we have to use RDP and he has specified uh, this room has already specified the syntax for using RDP okay okay let's copy this command and paste it into our machine okay let me go back a directory first okay we are in atlas let's now do this the username and password username was atlas Atlas and the password was hold up the heavens because this was the password. Okay, now it is connected to the RDP port three three eight nine. Okay, now. This is nice now. As you can see that my cursor is now visible and it's actually quite nice now. It is a bit slow, it will be a bit slow, but it is still better than the uh, than the interface we were using before. Uh, I mean through the website port 8080. Okay, it is now nice. So let's make it a bit more bigger. But Okay. Yes, now it is good. So it is specifying. Let's break down these switches. We used using this X free uh, X free RDP tool. So slash V specifies what we want to connect to. Dash U is actually self-explanatory because it says username and slash P says password cert ignore means the rdp connections are encrypted so our attacking machine doesn't recognize the certificate present by the machine we are connected to it will warn us so to ignore that warning we are using cert ignore clipboard means i think it's for copying uh, copying text from that machine to our kali machine or from our kali machine to that machine slash dynamic resolution gets us resize the gui graphical user interface window adjusting the resolution of the, our remote session automatically so last one is drive share so it has created a share in that uh, machine we are trying to hack in actually we have hacked in that machine in and in our machine so our temp folder is actually kind of connected with this machine machines share okay so keep in our mind connect to keep that in mind and use x free rdp to connect to to the target over rdp we have already connected it so now comes the privilege escalation part as i told earlier whenever you hack into a machine you are not an admin or you are not a root user you are always a you know simple user you have to escalate your privileges but let's see what it has windows x what this section this task six of this room has for us windows exploration is a massive topic which is complicated greatly by the 
common phrase nature of various defense mechanism antivirus software being the most well known of these so it has antivirus antivirus software i think but no uh, the atlas servers has had the defense mechanism deactivated for this room so the first thing we would do after getting to machine is run winpeace and sealed bit I know about WinPiece, it's a uh, enumeration tools, it kind of tells us all the vectors, all the vectors, attack vectors through which we can ex escalate our privileges. Uh, and that being said, it is saying that Windows enumeration can be daunting, but there are hundreds of different vectors to consider. To keep this room simple, we will instead look at a set of exploits in the print spooler service, which are Unpatched at the time of writing. Print Spooler is a notorious is notorious for privilege escalation vulnerability. It runs with the maximum available privileges under the anti-authority system. Anti-authority system is like root in Linux and is a popular target for vulnerability research. Okay, so there has been a powerful version made by John Hammond. Actually, he's kind of a great guy. I have watched his video many times every time he uploads a video i always watch his videos he is really a great guy john hammer he has a youtube channel let me show you his youtube channel okay this is his youtube channel he has done lots of certification of offensive security and many other he is actually a great guy i've been following him from i guess a year i watch his videos he has taught me a lot the, okay let's search it was not actually john hayman's channel it was it security let's see i rely on science as a foundation for my fitness goals and on my table no matter where in the world I am, True Basics Omega-3 Triple Strength Fish Oil is always part of my breakfast. My it has a high a potency slow. dosage of 960 mg EPA and DHA that reduces inflammation. This is his YouTube channel. You must check it out. It has 1091 videos and all his videos are gold. You must check it out. His, check, his, check out his channel and there are different implementations of print nightmare available you are you are advised to use this powershell one navigate to the temp directory of your attacking vm which is kali and clone the repository so let's go to the temp directory of our kali machine cd slash temp Okay, so let's get clone this repository. It has get cloned this repository, I guess, into a temp folder. And uh, remember that drive slash uh, drive uh, colon slash temp share argument in the x free RDB command. It is about to co come in useful. As I told earlier, it was kind of you know a connection uh, for sharing files between our machine and that machine we are attacking inside your rdb session open a powershell window so let's open a powershell window okay windows powershell let's open this now what we have to do is this we have to do this command to run our exploit okay Okay. we are running this print spooler exploit and after the exploit has been run we have to uh, you know invoke uh, execute this by typing invoke nightmare let's copy this command this dot syntax we used with this command was the dot this dot syntax was to import i guess function it was to import any functions exposed by this uh, script uh, and the dash dash ts client slash share to reference to the share we created uh, self-explanatory 
this allowed us to view files that are stored in the temp folder of our own attacking machine that is Kali here so let's run this okay now we have to invoke nightmare I guess this is the command yes this was the command let's type complete so notice that our payload mentions a new user created admin with a password of password so it creates a admin user admin means administrative I guess user but no uh, this is the default behavior when using this exploit regardless we can now make use of our brand new admin account okay so we can uh, when we know the credentials we can run this command shell as it is saying or cmd.exe which means command prompt I'll show you what it is it is uh, I think I have to search it first it is command prompt this device will be a bit slow or oh, this is the command prompt and you have to type run as administrator and it will ask for credentials okay as I told you it will ask for credentials okay but we have not run that first uh, our ex let's run our exploit first which was invoke nightwear and it will create a user admin with the password p at the rate s s w o r d okay so let me explain what I was trying to do it was command prompt run as administrator and the password was p at the rate s s w o r d so now I, I think we are having a prompt as admin who am I slash who am I so I am admin okay so what it is saying it is saying you can do this by choosing to run as admin as I showed you but that's no fun <laughs> instead let's use a hacky little powershell command to start a new high integrity command prompt running as our new administrator view so it is saying it is no fun doing that way it has specified a command uh, specified a command to do that so, power. so let's do the intended way let's paste this command type enter it will ask for password which was p at the rate s s w o r d password so it has let's type yes okay so let's see who am i i am admin okay run the who am i slash groups in your windows you will see built underscore uh, slash administrators in the list of groups so this user in the administrative groups administrative group and this, this slash what was it groups okay I think it was the other slash okay as you can see the built-in administrator and Elias is actually a member I think this Elias Elias yes okay uh, at the bottom of the output containing mandatory level high maintenance level this means that you are running as an administrator so this let me show you uh, this mandatory la uh, label high mandatory level this means that we are running as administrative with full access over the machine so let's do the post exploitation now Polo, uh, post exploitation means you know kind of getting other uh, username and passwords of admin because we created an admin username however but now that we are the admin or you can say root of this device we will do some post exploitation so that uh, we know the username and password of this user's owner uh, this device administrative password we created a, a user which was in the administrators group but we will, will know the now we will know the administrative password as well so for this we are using to use a tool called mimicats which is a post exploitation tool so it is saying just download this and I think it has a zip file okay we have to unzip that file let's download it first 
Mimi Cat. Okay, it has downloaded it. Now uh, let's move it to a temp folder. The command is move slash home slash kali slash download slash the name of the file. Uh, I'm specifying move after move this home slash kali slash download slash this because I'm specifying the full path of where my downloads folder is and dot means copy this to my current location. So let's unzip this file. Okay, it has unzipped this file. Now, as we know that this temp folder and that share of that device is connected. So let's say type complete. Switch back into your RDB session using the elevated command shell. Okay. Execute this Mimic uh, Ads. Okay. So let's go back to PowerShell. And now this time we will run this as administrator. We know the password, it was p at the rate ssword. So let's type this command. I think it should run without any errors. I think, I think so. Is it the correct folder? Let's type hack 64. Okay, it should run. And after that, what we have to do is if the command is successful, then we will see the output like this on our screen. We, we, when we start Mimikatz, we usually have to execute two commands before we start dumping hashes. Dumping hashes means extracting the hashes. Actually, we have to done this privilege slash debug. This contains debug privileges which allows us to access other processes from debugging purposes so okay we see this output which means mimicats ran successfully now type let's type this privilege debug command and after that token is elevated which means uh, which takes us from our administrative tail, uh, shell with high privileges into a system level shell with maximum privileges so we are system this is something that we have a right to do as an administrator okay so let's do this and start dumping hashes okay token elevated okay it has uh, anti-authority SID we have SID of anti-authority system now now what we have to do is simply type LSA dump SAM hashes which means Windows has two types of hashes SAM and system we are dumping SAM hashes using command LSA dump colon colon SAM. Okay, it has dumped the password password now. So let's move up a bit. Okay, we need the administrative hash. Where is it? Where is it? Yes, it is. It. There it is. The user administrator and his NTLM hash. Yeah. Let's copy. We have copied this hash. I think we have uh, done this. And what is the administrative accounts NTLM password hash? So this was the hash. Let's see if we can crack it not or not using John the Ripper. I'd... It's actually not in this uh, room, but let's try it. Let's see what is the hashcat module for NTLM. Let's see this example hash. Oh, example hashes. I guess control F is for search. Let's search NTLM. Okay, it, the module is thousand for NTLM hash. So let's type hashcat 
dash dash help for syntax because I cannot remember the syntax hash cat uh, where is it yes dash a attack mode 0 dash module which was 1000 and we have to specify hash first hash dot txt and then the I guess uh, that file uh, that is word list which is rockio.txt and it is placed in my documents directory so let's see what it can find let's try john the ripper as well simultaneously let's run john the ripper as well it has quite simple syntax john the hash file and the uh, you can say the word list okay it was two documents slash no, it is actually not in the scope of this video but i'm still trying to see whether it is crack uh, crack uh, crackable or not okay Has it cracked it? No. Okay, I don't think so. It has cracked the password. Okay, so we were not able to crack this password using hashcat. So let's try a online one crack station. Okay, the crack station failed as well, so maybe we cannot crack this password. But however, I show I showed you how you can do using hashcat and John the Reaper. Okay, so congratulations, you hacked Atlas. This was a beginner box which has which has hopefully provided you with some skills which will prove useful as you progress in your hacking journey. We covered initial exploitation of outdated software yes that thin vnc was the software which had a directory traversal ex exploit through which you can bypass that login and get the advanced credentials as well as exploiting the windows print spooler yes we did and dumping password hashes using mimikatz okay kudos for completing the room now go hack some more i hacked actors so here we have done this room i have explained uh, everything I could however if you still have doubt you can uh, type a comment uh, you can say in the comment box and I will try to answer your questions so that's it for this video and thank you for watching